So I'm still licking my wounds uh, from this poor little Yamaha, and we will save her, um, just not today. But I still have a problem. I am on my vacation, and my vacation was to set up some kind of a home audio system down here, listen to records. Um, I'm an impatient bastard. Um, I'll just come out and say it. So I had to solve a problem, and... Unfortunately, I don't live in an area where there's a lot of used hi-fi equipment stores anywhere around here, which is shocking. There used to be one, actually not far from where I'm standing right now, but it's gone. So I checked a couple thrift stores, the usual suspects, savers, etc. Can't find anything. Um, I went just out of... Hail Mary pass. I went to Best Buy looking for an, uh, a receiver that I can just use for now. And um, and then when I'm done with it, once this is all fixed up, you know, then we'll either resell it or whatever. So I couldn't believe it, but they actually had a couple of these in stock. Apparently, Sony still makes this model receiver. Now, these were around... I think this model came out in like 2018, so about three, almost four years ago. And this is their basic two-channel, 100 watt by 100 watt. Now, obviously that's not continuous. Um, just a basic, this is not a home theater uh, uh, receiver. This is a, a home stereo receiver, two channels. So no Dolby, Dolby 5 dot nothings here, just two channels and... And, and I know you're gonna you're gonna be like, why well, you mean you can't hook up a phonograph to that? Cause, Cause it's too modern. Well, it's okay, because it actually has a phonograph input. Um, this has a, uh, a a preamp input for a phonograph. Um, and you know, the more I think about it, the more I think, you know what? By the way, these retail for 168 bucks. Uh, we don't have sales tax in New Hampshire, so that's what I paid. It's got a. Ooh, it, it does have a remote. Sweet. It also has Bluetooth, so I can hook my phone up to it, because that's what the kids do these days. I almost forgot. I can't believe this thing still exists. <laughs> So anyway, this is uh, this is what they call a zombie product. Sony has been making these for three years, four years. This one was actually shipped in July. Uh, let's see, there's a date on this. Yeah, uh, that could be three seven of twenty one or seven three twenty one. I don't know if they're using European date codes or not, but uh, if that is to be correct, uh, this was shipped and delivered to my Best Buy store a couple days ago. So it's not like it's been sitting on the floor for 10 years. This is, this is actually kind of, you know, I'm glad I did this because we can compare a modern day basic two channel receiver to what was made many, many moons ago. Okay, a lot has changed in 40 years um, in terms of the amount of information given to the consumer. Like, you don't see a, a wiring diagram anywhere in this manual. And the manual, by the way, is only a couple pages. But looking at the... Um, let's take a look at our amplifier section. So speaker support A or B, um, 6 ohms to 16 ohms. And... Uh, 8 ohms to 16 ohms, depending on which setting. You have to set through the menu the speaker impedance, I believe. And I'm going to check these speakers and see what they really are. I think they're 8 ohms, or they're either 4 or 8 ohm speakers. Um, but, you know what? It would be a good idea to figure that out now. Because if they are 4 ohms, uh, we, we need to know that now, actually, because they could be... Yeah, they may, they may be a little bit too heavy for this uh, for this amp. So hold on, let me go check that. Uh, I believe only the really high-end ones were 4 ohm speakers. These... 5.4? No, that can't be right. Oh, 
boy, these are four ohms. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let me check the other one. Just, 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 just let's just see. So these speakers might not be uh, safe for that for that unit um, that we just picked up. <laughs> This, 5.6, 5, 5 4. Point, yeah, these are 4 ohm. So, well, <laughs> that's not great. Um, so it looks like we should probably look at some speakers. But I'm not going to spend money on speakers. I'm going to take my chances. Um... We'll set it up for six ohms. And um, yeah, if you select A and B, it's 12 to 16 ohms. You guys, if you guys realize how that works, right? It's the amount of resistance those speakers um, create combined should be no more than, um, or no less than uh, 12 ohms um, and six ohms respectively. We'll set it to six ohms. And, um, you know, should be okay, whatever. <laughs> 5.1 ohms is close, right? The amount of resistance. All right. Now, what we really want to see is what the amplifier can put out. So, minimum RMS output. 9.9% um, per, total harmonic distortion. 90 watts plus 90 watts. So I think that's per channel. And um, stereo mode output power, 8 ohms, 1 kilohertz. Total harmonic distortion, 1%. 100 watts by 100 watts. So these, this thing puts out, in theory, um, a little bit more power, I guess. Am I reading that correctly? That's not, that's not um, what am I saying, peak, peak output? Is that continuous? I believe that's continuous. That can't be. That can't be right. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know. Continuous would be more. So this one, um, continuous is 40 watts. Um, here we go, yeah, 40 watts per channel at 0.05% distortion. So this has a little bit more, a little bit more distortion. Hmm, interesting. The way they word it, I think they're being very careful about that. You know what I'm saying? Power consumption. 190 watts on the, uh, whatchamajigger, 190 watts, this one, 200 watts. So, I guess in theory, if it's pulling that kind of wattage, it's got to go somewhere. So, uh, you know, maybe this does have the power that, um, that we need. And looking inside, you can see there's the two, those are the two main caps right there size wise they're fairly comparable to those two maybe a little bit shorter but that doesn't necessarily mean they're not powerful um, I guarantee you that this uh, this amplifier is designed within inches of its life um, you know this thing could take some abuse well, in, in its younger healthier days this amplifier right here the Yamaha could take some real abuse uh, before it really starts to flake out. But this one, um, well, and then again, it's Sony, so it's probably got all kinds of built-in protection features that will prevent it from blowing itself to bits. But anyway, let's get it set up and see how it sounds. So I ended up getting all new speaker hose. So now I gotta hook it all up. So we're gonna put one speaker there and one over there. Okay. Let's get on with it. All right, so all the speaker hoses have been cut and cleaned. I had to 
clean the dust out of them and all that. Um, so we're going to turn it on for the first time. I looked up the NS5s. I found the manual for them. They are rated at 6 ohms. So, so that's kind of cool. Um, so they're compatible. Let's turn it on. Let's set our speaker stuff. Um, I think I have to go to... Uh, be like a amp menu speaker impedance 8 ohm 6 ohm okay is that it bluetooth menu phono phono of phono of phono offset oh no, I don't know what that should be okay Let's go to input one. And I'm going to play a CD. I have the remote for this, which is quite nice. I'm probably, you know, I'm going to definitely fix that, uh, that receiver, but I'm probably just for convenience sake, whatever. We'll just leave it with this one. Um, I know there's a CD in there. It's got to be. Where's the, uh, uh, where is it? One of these buttons. Oh, there it is. There should be something in there. No, huh? Well, then. What do we got? Clean this uh, this changer. I tore it all apart back in the condo, and uh, it, was, it was actually pretty nice. It came out pretty good. We have sound. All right, I can't play sound because stupid YouTube. So I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to this, see how it sounds, and then I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do next. Well, I'm happy to report that this stereo actually sounds pretty damn good. I mean, for the basement, it's perfect. Um, so we're just going to leave well enough alone. Um, this turntable is running great. I may pull the motor apart and uh, just clean the bearings on the motor. Uh, because it, at startup, it's a little sluggish. But it does eventually wake up. So along with that... Uh, Sad, sad Yamaha. I got this Technics SLB20 turntable. It's in okay condition. Um, it is complete. It has the wrong cover on it. From what I understand, the original cover snapped off. Um, so uh, Mr. K took the cover from his, what was then a broken Yamaha turntable, and he mounted it using screws to the back of this. Pretty clever. I mean, it, hey, it does a job, right? Um, it said it didn't work, but let's take a look. So I, uh, I got it plugged in. Now this has a, um, a strobe built in, and these were designed to allow you to visualize the um, turntable speed accuracy, if you will. So when set to the correct, it's like 33 RPM, and you move the tone arm over, that strobe light should stabilize on the bottom ring of notches at the bottom of the platter. But it doesn't. It, those notches keep moving. They shouldn't keep moving. So I'm thinking the belt might be slipping a bit. Highly possible. I took the belt off. It was actually in okay condition. I cleaned it up, it was kind of grimy. So now it spins, but it looks like it might be losing or gaining, probably losing speed. Uh, would, not be, uh, would not be surprised. So we're gonna plug it in and see what it sounds like. Um, this has a, uh, a straight tone arm. It appears to be some kind of cast material. 
I mean, I wouldn't say this is a, a very low end. I mean, it's probably lower end, but probably mid 80s, I would say. Probably 85, 84, somewhere around that time. Um, it's got a Pickering cartridge on, on the front. Could probably use a new needle. Probably the original one. New stylus, I mean. And the whole... I don't know if there's a shell missing off of this or what. But, um... I wouldn't do this. We'll, we'll bring it over to the stereo and we'll, uh, we'll see how it sounds. And here you can see that hinge repair that he did. So he took the hinges from another turntable that he had and he grafted them on. <laughs> hey, it worked. What's wrong with that? Um, so let's get it hooked up. All right, see if I can do this without... I think this might have a preamp. Yeah, maybe not. Sounds okay so far. But it's not stabilizing. It's not a good thing. We're losing speed. this pitch adjustments for. Oh, hey, there you go. There we go. I see, I see. Shit, we have a winner. This thing sounds pretty damn good. Um, like, really good. For my ears, anyway. I'm, I'm no audiophile, but it, um, it definitely sounds good. Um, better than this thing. I'm gonna compare it again. I'm gonna put it this record on that turntable and see how it sounds. Um, it certainly is a nicer turntable. It has, you know, auto stop, return, all that happy crap. Um, this one will, if you leave it unattended, it will just destroy itself. Well, you know, I d <laughs> so one of the features that this tuner has, or this stereo tuner receiver, whatever you want to call it, in your nomenclature. Um, one feature that it has is called Pure Direct. Now, Pure Direct has a feature that, or is a feature that turns off, get this, it turns off the lighting. The idea is that it um, reduces noise, audio noise caused by the lighting. And Pure Direct. It's a setting that will appeal to many audio enthusiasts, and what it's doing is it's turning off all internal pro audio processing features, um, so you can't even adjust the, the uh, equalizing bass treble, any of that. There's nothing nothing really to be added to the, uh, to the input signal. Um, this is, um, you know, the market for this receiver is probably very small. I'm actually surprised Best Buy carries these in their stores. I'm even more surprised at how low priced it is, considering it does sound pretty damn good. A little blemish there, huh? I wonder if I did that. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know who the target audience is, but I bought one. You know what, you know what? I, I think I got it. The target audience for the uh, STR DH-190 is the budding audiophile. The, the teenager who got one of those little suitcase Crosley record players and got sick of it, and they want something a little bit more, but they don't want to spend $400 on a 1978 Yamaha receiver. They can afford what they can afford, and this is very affordable. And it'll allow them to use their dad or their mom's old record player, because it does have a and um, a phonograph preamp, preamp built in. Um, so I think that's who they're really targeting. They're, basically, the, the kid who grew up with a Crosley record player to listen to their vinyl, because that's what kids do now, apparently, and they just want something a little bit more. 
and and this i mean it's a decent sounding stereo so this video is going to take a sudden turn da, da, da. okay i am look i'm i'm bored I'm on vacation for this week, and I got time on my hands, and I decided, you know, I want to try something. Okay, I have heard, now, because of freaking copyright bullshit, I can't demonstrate the sound coming out of either of these two turntables that I've just shown. What I can tell you is that they both sound, they complement each other, the tra and, and, and this could... And this is one of the variables that is hard to really account for. The styli in both turntables are of unknown condition. I don't have a loop, a jeweler's loop, to really see what they look like. But I'm fairly certain that this one is quite worn out because of its its, uh, its original usage. Um, as far as the Technics, um, it sounds much crisper. Um... Like I said, boredom being a bitch. I am going to. I all right. I I did a thing. I went to Best Buy. Now, when I bought that receiver, I noticed that they actually had two semi-legit turntables in stock. And one of them was this Sony. This is the more expensive of the two. They have an Audio Technica and they have a Sony in stock. I have a couple of each. And I just wanted to say, I, I want to see how these turntables, how bad they really are. I actually sacrificed a couple hundred of my own very hard-earned dollars just for this video. I'm, I'm serious. I don't need this turntable, but I feel like we need to do this. So here's what I think Sony's game plan is. Crosley has managed to capture the youthful uh, hipster if you will, uh, audience from the likes of Sony. And Sony's left with a couple of outdated piece of, pieces of audio equipment that nobody wants. So I think what Sony's really trying to do here is to offer a slightly better option than what Crosley's peddling. You know, they're like Beetlejuice, waving that Zagnut bar, you know, to the fly. Hey, hey, here, come on, come on. You know you want me. Um, you know, what they're doing, watch Beetlejuice if you haven't, but what, what they're doing is they're creating kind of like an entry-level hi-fi system that, I'm going to put this down for a sec, I don't have my tripod, but they're creating an audio system that you can, a component audio system that kind of harkens back to Sony's yesteryear uh, time period. You know, back in the day when Sony was actually legitimately cool. And let's just see how, how good or bad. So we're going to pair our Sony entry-level hi-fi uh, receiver with one of Sony's, I think maybe their only turntable that they currently have on the market. All right, so we've got this little white box. Got the, uh, the the platter cover. Oh, the way they package this thing is ridiculous. Now you'll be able to buy one of these turntables at your local thrift store in about five years for about twenty dollars. But to get this on my video on my channel now, I had to shell out two hundred dollars. The Audio Technica, by the way, is one hundred and fifty. Um, and of course, New Hampshire. Jesus, no sales tax. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this thing out of the box and we'll restart the camera. All right. So while Crosley is still peddling their plastic platters, Sony is offering you for the price of 200 macaroonies a die-cast platter with a replaceable rubber belt. So this is a belt-driven model. I hope that's not the production date. Is there a date on the box as to when it was shipped? There was on the on the uh, phone uh, the, the receiver seven three twenty one. So this was shipped at the same time as my receiver, which tells me it's a very possible reality that uh, 
Sony is pushing themselves into this market and Best Buy is along for the ride. Or Best Buy is saying, hey Sony, we're still in business somehow. Um, let's help each other out. Imagine that. Two very, very um, beaten down companies trying to help each other out. Tell you what, we will sell vinyl records if you... Take a look at this thing. All right. I, I gotta be honest, I love the way it looks. It actually looks pretty decent. I mean, it's it's plastic, but it's not that cheap Crosley feel, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't have that Crosley feel to it. Um, the, there's our needle. Is this replaceable? I don't think it is. No, I think I think Sony pulled a fast one on us. It looks like they made the, the stylus non-replaceable. I'll check the manual to see what, what that what that entails. Um, it's a a tone arm. That's metal. It's got a metal tone arm. That's plastic. Plastique. Here's our speed selector. It's electronic, so it's not a uh, belt shifter. Record size. Um, hmm. But the plastic appears to be fairly beefy. There is a... Um, yeah, by the way, this is Bluetooth. Now, you know you've lost the plot when you're trying to pump... <laughs> I, I gotta laugh at this. I'm sorry. I have to. This is fun. This makes me laugh. All right. The whole point of listening to vinyl is to feel the analogness of the audio, the, the raw audio, you know, all the stuff that the computers filter out. You, you get it with, 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 a, with a spinning vinyl disc. But then you go and you pump that through Bluetooth through a an amplifier that is heavily um, digitally modified I mean it the absurdity of it all just blows my freaking mind but hold on a second I, I gotta find out for sure if this is replaceable because if it's not I'm bringing it right back uh, hold on all right so it looks like the stylus is replaceable but you have to buy it from Sony. So this does not have a, you know, a uh, universal um, head shell. It's probably one of Sony's very own bespoke units. So we're gonna put the belt on. But this is definitely a step above a, uh, a Crosley, actually probably a giant leap, as long as it's paired with the right uh, set of speakers. And yeah, hold on a second. Mm. Let me see if I can't do this right here. So you have to. Um, there we go. There it's on. Yeah, I could have gotten this thing cheaper, I'm sure, if I had just chopped around, maybe bought it online. Um, I was hoping they would have an open box unit on the shelf, but sadly they did not. So this is an automatic turntable, so you, um, by hitting the start button, I believe it automatically pushes the tone arm. So the controls are pretty simple. Um, this is your cueing control up down although it's not really raising it very far oh you know why there we go it's not reset there we go 
Ah, oh, there we go. So there's your uh, your queuing button, your start and stop controls. So this is a, you know, it's a pretty decent turntable for the modern era, I guess. Um, it's definitely priced well below the um, the boutique models, which are hundreds of dollars. Um, so if you're looking for a basic record player for your, you know, the record collection you're starting to build up, I'd say this is a pretty good buy. It doesn't look cheap. It doesn't really feel all that cheap. I mean, I'm again, I'm comparing this to um, to 1980s models that I've been messing with over there in the corner. And um, we haven't heard it play, but I don't think it's going to sound all that bad. Of course, when V Westlife makes a video of one of these, and I know he will, um, he's probably going to run right out and buy one just to fill in the blanks. And by rights, I hope he does, because I would love to hear what his opinion is on this thing. Now, the platter cover is basically mouse pad material. It doesn't say Sony or anything on it, which is kind of surprising, but it does it definitely has a much nicer feel than anything that I've seen with the Crosley name on it. Um, Crosley just, you know what Crosley is, is that they're an opportunity seeker. They seized on the opportunity to get into the vinyl market. So Crosley had already been producing uh, models for nursing homes basically they were they were selling uh, they were selling your grandmother her last record player that's what crosley was all about they were trying to sell your grandma her last record player that was their whole deal and then all of a sudden out of nowhere the uh the the young the younger generation really started getting into vinyl and they got into got into vinyl for a couple of reasons number one it's retro and retro is almost always cool number two um, they've, people are getting sick of DRM. They really are. People all over the world are getting sick and tired of DRM and heavily compressed digital music designed to fit on a small file, um, or to be streamed over the air. So CDs, which seemed like the most obvious solution to that, um, were skipped over in favor of records, which is kind of interesting. And I think it was because of the large amount of popular 1960s and 70s and 80s music that was released on vinyl that people started buying up in thrift, stores, thrift, thrift, shorts, thrift, 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 thrift stores. And by doing so, they just sort of created a grassroots movement towards vinyl. And vinyl is cool. Um, it does sound good if it's on the right equipment. Um, but you put it on a Crosley that you inherited from your dead grandma, it's just, um, it's miserable, man. Absolutely horrible. So, let me do this. I'm going to set this up over there on the, uh, on the cabinet, and, um, I'm going to put the cover. Yeah, does this thing have, uh, have hinges? It must. Oh, here they are. There's our power supply. What I didn't see are hinges. Did you? And a Bluetooth module. I thought for sure that's what that that connector was for, but um, oh, you know what that's probably for? No, I don't. Yeah, where are the hinges for the cover? Does it have them? Um, let's take a look. Oh, there they are. Oh, and there's the 33 adapter, or the 45 adapter. You know what I'm saying. Let's take a look at these hinges. Let's see what kind of hinges they gave us. Are they going to be cheap plastic or something a little bit more premium? Oh, that's surprising. That is really shocking. Um, they are... No, they're plastic. At first, at first I thought they were going to be alloy. Um, cause they almost look like it through the packaging. These are plastic, but they're premium plastic. So, you know, slide right into the back here. And they've got, um, they've got this, uh, foamy stuff on them so that they don't vibrate. Oh, impressive. 
And we've got our 33 adapter here. 45 adapter. Sorry, sorry. Mm. Mm. All right, so that uh, just sticks right on there. But what's interesting is there's no, there's no storage place for it anywhere on the unit. Anything under the mat maybe? No, nothing like that. So yeah, I mean, I think it's a, the, the fit and finish of this unit is pretty decent. Um, again, and, and it's not flimsy. I mean, it doesn't twist, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm impressed. What I'm not impressed about though is this. I don't, I'm not impressed by this. You know, it should have an internal power supply. I'm sorry, that's, that's pretty freaking standard in my opinion. Bluetooth though, my, that's cute. Hey, we're gonna listen to analog records and we're gonna pump them through Bluetooth speakers, yeah! Come on, Bluetooth. I guess it is the modern era and I am an old curmudgeon. I'm only 37, but I'm old enough to remember when records and cassettes were sold in stores like Walmart before they were cool again. So, hey, I am what I am. Let's look it up. Okay, another question that people are gonna ask is does this have a built-in preamp? And yes, it does. Um, and you enable it by, pre by selecting phono right there on the output select. So, um, I mean, sorry, line. So you want to, if you're hooking it up to a genuine phonograph input, like what we're doing over here. So it, once we get that, that, um, that old, uh, that old receiver fixed up, we're going to hook it up to as a phono device. Um, but we're going to do the same thing over here too. It does have a USB, uh, streaming port so you can actually record directly off of it. As far as I understand it. And we're going to leave this on on or standby. We'll leave it as on. And uh, here's our captive um, audio cable. So, all right, let's hook her up. People are going to shit all over these phonographs because they're not, you know, they're not high end. They're not. But look, if you're just a just a schlub like me or a kid or whatever and you want to get into vinyl you could do a lot worse than this phonograph um, it is a little pricey for a lower end model when you can buy the Audio Technica for only 150 it has all the same features and probably has a better head shell but let's um let's try let's check it out let's uh, hit the start button Of course, I'm going to have to stop the audio once it starts to play. But look at that. It works. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. Hey, it works um, and it matches that receiver pretty damn well. So if you're looking for an, a, a better than Crosley, uh, better than Victrola, um, entry level hi-fi system with a phonograph, you could do worse than the Sony, uh, what is that thing? The D STR DH-190 and the PSLX310BT phonograph. You could do a lot worse than those um all in i oh i gotta take this phone call <laughs> one of the uh, there's two shortcomings with this turntable which is what are going to pretty much eliminate it from the short list of uh, anyone who considers themselves an audio enthusiast 
Um, there is no adjustable uh, tone arm weight that I can see. Um, and the other issue is there is no anti-skating adjustment either. So anyone who's really into their vinyl isn't going to want this unit. But you knew that anyway. I didn't have to say that in this video because it has, you know, <laughs> yeah. So Sony's not really a, uh, an, uh, an audio enthusiast brand anymore. It may have been at one point, but isn't now. It might as well say General Electric on it, <laughs> as far as most of you are concerned. So no adjustments on the tracking force, no adjustments on the skating or anti-skating. Um, it, it, it does limit its appeal, but they knew what they were doing when they put it on the market. Because it has Bluetooth on it, they knew exactly who was buying this, and they only built it for that particular audience. So there you have it. The PSLX 310BT. I would love, by the way, for V Westlife to do a video on something from this uh, family. I'd, it seems to be a completely different mechanism from what I'm used to seeing. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's a little different, a little more modern than what I've been seeing from a lot of the other turntable man uh, manufacturers. Most of them fall under the Crosley, uh, you know, <laughs> family. But all right, well, that's it for now. I got I got work to do. I got to start cleaning up this basement. It's kind of a mess. This turntable right here, I'm going to give this sucker to my dad because he's got the perfect unit for this. Um, and my mom has an extensive record collection, by the way. You probably didn't know that, but she does. My mom has an extensive record collection. A lot of good shit, too. Um, so, And they don't own a turntable between the two of them. So now they do. And they've got the stereo to use with it, um, the one that I rebuilt for them. Um, in fact, I'm going to take the... I should probably give them this one, actually. I'm not really sure which one. Um, but that one better matches the stereo that my father has. So we'll give them that one. So till then, guys, keep on cranking the tunes. <laughs>